Hi from the Heartland, y'all. It's Square Peg, and I'm here to talk a little more about this time anomaly that I have been tracking. So if you've been following me for a little while, you may have known that I've talked about things like the watch advertisements that all show the time of 1010, and I feel like that's an indication of a stopping of time for some reason, and perhaps that the 1010 is a date like it could be January 1st, 1-1, one, one. could be October 10th, 10-10, ten, ten. could be October 1st, 10-1, could be January 10th, 1-10. It's got this 1-1 one, one, and I see the AAs everywhere, double A's, and that's 1-1 one, one also. There were two incidences of a bunch of birds falling to the ground on New Year's Day in BB, Arkansas, one year apart, 2012 and 2013, or... 2011 and 2012. I don't remember now. But that's unusual. That is that is very anomalous. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know exactly what to do with those events just yet. Those bird events. I've also talked about Big Ben stopping. Notably, the one that I remember mentioning is on New Year's again. 1963? So I think it was 62 going into 63 when Big Ben stopped for about nine or 10 minutes, so New Year's arrived late, right? So lots of different things indicating time anomalies. Oh, that's right, there was also um, those two headlines in the 30s that I've talked about. One of them was All Quiet on the Western Front and the BBC popping in with the news for the day and all he said was, there is no news. And we did the gematria for there is no news. I don't remember what it adds up to now, but they just played music instead of news that day. Like, there is no news. What Did, did time stop? <laughs> How is there no news, right? So these are the kinds of things that I've already discussed. And I came across the other day when I was looking at 1700, some very interesting headlines. There aren't very many listed totally for the whole year of 1700. It's a very short list of headlines because it's so far back. And a goodly number of them had to do with time or calendar. So, I went ahead and looked at this same timeline that I was looking at the other day in the video. So, 1700, 1862 to 2024, right? I did not find much in 1862 until I went to the Google machine, not Google, but whatever, and I typed in 1862 time change just to see what would come up, right? And that led me to something very interesting in 1883. I'll get to it. Ties in Chicago and everything. <laughs> oh, man. So let's start at the beginning, 1700. What did I find there? On the very first day, Russia begins using the Anno Domini era and no longer uses the Anno Mundi era of the Byzantine Empire. Okay, first thing, I don't know what the, why they're using the word era. I really don't know what that means. How do you stop using an era and begin using another era? Uh, 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 that does not compute for me. But I kind of get what they're getting at, that there's something to do with the changing of the keeping of the calendar. And also I wanted to point out that Anno Domini has D-O-M, dome, has the word dome in there. Right? Interesting. That's Russia. All right. 228, 1700. This is another, like, weird headline. Today is followed by March 1st in Sweden, thus creating the Swedish calendar. Okay, this is February 28th. Today is followed by March 1st in Sweden. <laughs> uh, 228 is usually followed by 3-1. Maybe it's because everyone else was jumping ahead 10 days, so Swedish remained independent on its own separate calendar. I really don't know, but it was interesting. And again, with the Sweden. Sweden is very popular. It's popping up in headlines everywhere. All right. Now we have a whole bunch of headlines that are countries switching from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. 219, Denmark. 6.30, Gelderland. 11.30, there was Utrecht, Overissel, Buren, 
Leerdum, and Eselstein. I believe they're all in the Netherlands, in and around that area, perhaps. I know Utrecht is. I'm guessing the other ones are as well. Um, and then on the last day of 1700, 1231, Frisia and Groningen switched calendars to Gregorian. So that's certainly not all the countries in the world, but it is interesting that they're all up there in Northern Europe, which the Great Northern War started. And I, it started in 1700, and then Denmark and Sweden, sometime later that same year, signed a peace treaty. So the two of them stopped fighting against each other, but I think the rest of them were still going at it for a minute. So we have calendar changing going on in 1700. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm tracking down this time anomaly. What's going on? I'm starting to get wind of three extra days this year. Three extra days. Okay, so I don't know if it's a time, like time of day clocks stopping or if it's a calendar change you know is it daylight savings time kind of stuff that we're looking at or is it you know julian to gregorian calendar type stuff you know some change in the number of days of the year i had talked in the other day about that about this in that video eight degrees of separation that if there's a tilt in the rotation of the axis of the earth we we could have some sort of change in the number of days yeah, crazy, right? So what happened in 1862? This is what I found before I Googled anything, just on that website, onthisday.com, right? Oh, I'm starting backwards. Let's start at the top. Oh, that's a different category. Blue is a different category. So July 29th, 1862, Confederate spy Bell Boyd was arrested. Bell Boyd. So there's a BB. There's also a Bell. And I've talked about bells, bells ringing, bells stopping, bells cracking, right? And then, of course, in the middle of bell, there is L, <laughs> E-L, right? So, Bell Boyd arrested. So, arrested could involve the police, but arrested is also another way to say stopping, you know, or slowing down, right? So, we have bell arrested, the stopping of the bells, that's what this headline says. It's connected to the stopping of the bells, the stopping of time, right? 729-1862. All right, this one, 7-4-1862. So both in July. This is the publication of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. He was on a family boat trip on the river Isis. And then it had in parentheses, Thames in Oxford. So. I don't know if the river has changed names. It used to be Isis back then, and now it's the Thames. Or what's going on there? Oxford. It's got Ford in there, and it also has an animal. Ox. Right. So, that was 1862. Now we are going to move on to what happened when I just typed it in there. Googled it. Right? 1883. This is so good, God. So, I couldn't believe it when I found this. The name of the article, well, the, the date the article came out, first of all, was January 4th of 2018, which connects over the January 21 flip date to January of this year. Three years from 18 to 21, another three years from 21 to 24. That's just the article date. The name of the article was How Chicago Gave America Its Time Zones. Oh, no kidding! Really? So I'm going to read a little bit of this article. It was very, it was quite a long article. I just took little snippets out of it, right? So, uh, 1883. Until 1883, the country was a chaos of local times. Then, in one week, everyone in America was on the same clock. Chicago was, and still is, the biggest railroad town in the country. And the railroads were, in both the U.S. and Europe, the catalyst for the creation of time zones. Oh, a change in time connected to railroads. Interesting. Here's uh, continuing on with the article. Take this time and distance indicator from 1862. What? 
So this article that's connected to this year is referencing a date uh, which I was able to connect to this year. And in the history that's mentioned here, it's connecting to 1862, which is connected to this year on this timeline. Holy shoot, that's coinkadingle. Anyway, returning. When it was noon in Philly, it was 12.04 in New York, 12.06 in Albany, 12.16 in Boston, and 11.54 in Baltimore. Meanwhile, it was 11.10 in Chicago, 10.59 in St. Louis, and 11.18 in Indianapolis. Interesting collection of uh, cities that are mentioned there. Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Baltimore, Albany, Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis. Okay, Chicago's local time was determined by the Chicago Astronomical Society, which came into existence in 1862. Yep, two connections in this article connecting 1883 and 1862. So these timelines are connected with the story. So the Chicago Astronomical Society is the oldest in the Western Hemisphere. Notable. Jewelers were also instrumental catalysts. And then the quote is, Chicago's first official timekeeper was a jeweler. And this makes sense if you think the jewelers were often also like uh, watch makers, uh, fixers, right? You go to the jewelry store to get your watch fixed. Well, at least you could back in the day. I don't know about so much anymore, but anyway. Um, okay. Railroad representatives gathered in October of 1883 at the luxurious Grand Pacific Hotel, this was in Chicago, for the Timetable Convention, otherwise known as the Railway Time Convention. Well, that's a major event involving time. A, a whole convention. And it was a huge number of people involved. It was a huge, all the rail lines and all the railway executives of all the different rail companies in Canada and the U.S. What do these ones say here? Um, on 10-11, U.S. and Canadian railroads agree to five time zone system for North America. But then, a month later, 11-18, Railroads set and synchronize four standard time zones. So in between when they came to the agreement and it actually got implemented, they dropped a time zone. I guess they decided five was too many. <laughs> anyway, so November 18th of 1883 is the official date for the set and synchronization of U.S. time zones. That is very interesting. One thing I did not mention was the, just the numbers here in case you can't read them, but 1700 to 1862 is 162 years and another 162 years out to this year. And then 1883, 70 years out to 1953, and there's 70 years from 1954 to this year. Because this event was so late in 1883, that's why we're, we're sort of straddling this 53-54. It's not that I'm fudging it. It's just like a, a half a year. So that's just the way it works out, right? So 70 years and 70 years. All right, so I read those headlines. Time and distance indicator from 1862 and the Chicago Astronomical Society, 1862. That's what these sticky notes say. And I noticed that these were 21 years apart from 1862 to 1883, 21 years. Well, that brings me back to my previous video about where I mentioned Saturn and Jupiter. 21 equals Saturn. Saturn is Kronos, time. Ah, very similar to chromosome, that chrono, chronological, chromological. Interesting. Oh, I also have here what the time anomaly adds up to. The whole phrase adds up to 161. But I got a problem with articles. That's why I like Russian, the language. Because they don't, they don't have all these thes, a, and, the, all the articles. Nah, just not there. It's, it's very simpler. <laughs> I like it. So, 
Then I just looked at time anomaly. So time is 47, silver, and a bunch of other things, X flare and such. Anomaly is 81, R. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's the mirror of R. Anyway, well, T is 20, drop the zero and you have a two, and then A for anomaly is one, and there's your 21, Saturn, Kronos, 21 years here. Just uh, interesting little synchronizations and such, right? Okay, let me pause and figure out where I'm at. I'll be right back. Okay, so the key thing here is now, is there anything that's time related, calendar time related here, right? We've got this connection, which brings in this date. So now I wanna know, is there something in between this date and this year that's time calendar related? So what do we have? Well. For, for laughs, we'll start with the two soap operas. <laughs> On 1-4 of 1954, The Brighter Day. Okay, that's kind of stretching it. 2-1 of 1954, The Secret Storm. <gasps> oh, it's very dramatic. Soap operas and such. But The Secret Storm just made me think of, you know, Trump said the calm before the storm, and everybody's talking about the big storm is coming, the storm, a oh, storm is coming, storm is coming, a oh, storm is coming. Well, if it's a if it's an energy, then we wouldn't necessarily, like, see the storm or feel the storm, like, wind. You know, you wouldn't see the trees blowing in the breeze, flags flapping, you wouldn't hear them flapping, thunder, lightning, the whole thing that a storm conjures in the mind, you know? A secret storm is one that you wouldn't necessarily know was happening, right? So... You think of gamma rays, the effects of gamma rays on the man and the moon marigolds. <laughs> Crazy title of a play. Or a time wave. Like, would we know if we woke up in a different timeline? Like, if the sky was a different color, would we know that it was a different color? Or would it just, like, blend? We would just assume that it's always been that color, you know, because we just shifted timelines and now we live in a place where the sky is green, you know, a secret storm. And that's why I bring it up. The brighter day. Okay. No, you know, I get it. But the secret storm, I find that interesting. So that's why I've got a note there, but here's where it gets real good. Y'all this one here, this green sticky note. This is it. This is the good stuff right here. 2.15, February 15th of 1954. The first Bevatron particle accelerator goes into operation at Berkeley. Particle accelerator and a time anomaly. Yeah, I'm thinking that that is a really important data point that shows all together here, we're looking at some sort of a, a time, something happening this year. Now I have another video that I have uh, in the works, like a part three, this year's part two, that's going to go into sort of timing of when I think this might happen. I mean, certainly 2024. Okay, but can we narrow it down a little more and like why, how, the mechanics of it, that sort of thing. I'm going to be looking into a little more as well. Yeah. Hold on. Got to pause again. Ah, yes. There was one category on here in the blue sticky notes that I haven't mentioned yet. So I'm going to wrap up with books. Books. That's not on the topic at all. Like has nothing to do with time. But I did run across these three headlines and they're on these timelines. So got to mention it. Up here, 1862, we have July 1st, the Russian State Library was founded in Moscow. Cool. 1883, August 29th, the first Carnegie Library opens in Scotland. Cool. Couple of positive library headlines. That's good news. Now, this one, maybe not so much. October 19th of 1953, a book was published 
by Ray Bradbury, I believe, and the title was Fahrenheit 451, where they were burning all the books. <sighs> and people were memorizing them because they were being burned. So every person was assigned a book that they memorized word for word, which isn't a bad idea, but whoo, what a daunting task. So a couple of positive library, excuse me, headlines and one anti-book headline, which reminds me of the Alice in Wonderland. So I brought this up, but I, I neglected to mention why it's on the time anomaly. It's because of the white rabbit. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Yeah? Clocks and such. That's why I brought up Alice in Wonderland. In case anybody was like, huh? How does that relate? Although you're all very smart and you probably figured it out. But just in case. <sighs> all right. Now, on a parting note, I found a whole bunch of headlines that are connected to things that are hot and crushing and other things that I've been talking about for a while. Trains. All kinds of cool stuff in these three years. However, we're already over 21 minutes on this video, so I'm going to stop it here and I'm just going to make like a sort of addendum video and share these headlines that I found in these three years because, wow, all kinds of stuff that I've been talking about. Yeah, and other people as well. So, whoo, what an exciting time to be alive. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.